Hi there, welcome to today's digital replay. We're continuing in Unit 1, the introduction, and we are now moving to page 7 through 11, uh, continuing our discussion of what is science, how does science work, with a conversation about evidence and inference. Bum bum, do 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 do. There are so many TV crime dramas out on TV right now, it's it's crazy. And in every single one of these Hollywood TV crime dramas, we always talk about getting the evidence, collecting the evidence, finding the evidence to get the bad guys in jail. Here's the thing. This is great for you to learn a little bit about how uh, detectives work and, and how the, the, the justice system works. But Hollywood is really good at blurring the line between evidence and inference. So it's actually better if we not think about Hollywood crime dramas necessarily when we're thinking about solving mysteries uh, in science, but maybe we should think about a real life mystery. And in this class we focused a lot about uh, on Utsi the Iceman and it's it's a really fascinating story that actually rewrote the history books. So we, fo we spent a little bit of time on this guy, Utsi the Iceman man solving his mystery. In 1991, a body was found by some hikers in the Alps. And this was no ordinary body, as was found out later uh, when they started to dig it out, when the coroner came to dig it out. They found out that this was a mummy. This was a mummified human being. And we found some artifacts that supported that this person, this being, was not uh, from 1990s or even in present day time. This, this was a much older being. So we took the evidence, we took all the artifacts back to the lab, we took the body back to the lab, and we did some more study. I'm hiking along in the Alps, I come across a body. I make an assumption, I make an inference that maybe this is a hiker that passed away. I call in the coroner, they start to realize that maybe this body isn't a modern body and some of the evidence that supports that at the time, uh, looking at this, it's not normal, something's different about it, uh, is these artifacts, these things which are, do not look modern. So then we start to ask questions like, who is this person? How did this body get here? When did they die? And we take the body and the artifacts back to the lab and we start to gather more evidence. We do some radiocarbon dating, we do some CT scans, we do some x-rays, and we start to figure out that this is a 5,000 year old mummy. This person lived 5,000 years ago and died 5,000 years ago. And we figure out that this person did not die by accident. We see some uh, brain da or some skull damage, some, some broken bones, some hand-to-hand -hand com combat evidence. We even see an arrowhead lodged in this person's back. This person was murdered. By who? We don't know. But we have some evidence that we've collected. We can start to put together a picture story of what happened. At some point, Utsi the Iceman, who was hiking through the wilderness, was shot in the back by an arrow. By whom? When? Why? We have to make some inferences about these things. What we know is the evidence that we collect. John? Can you explain to me why, why the sprinkles are empty? Well, they're not empty. John, look at me. They're not empty. Did you eat those sprinkles? No, I did not. You're not supposed to lie. Tell me now. Did you eat those sprinkles? No, I did not eat those sprinkles. I just love this video about this little boy. I mean, here he is, he's convinced that he, he did not eat the sprinkles. And his mom is convinced that he did eat the sprinkles. Now the difference between the two is she has evidence. She shows him the evidence on the counter. The sprinkles in the jar that are half gone. The sprinkles on the counter. She even says, hey, you have sprinkles on your face. And from these pieces of evidence, I infer that you ate the sprinkles. This is a great, simple way of looking at evidence and inference. Sherlock Holmes is a TV crime drama hero. He's also the star of many incredible books, which I say, please, please read. These are fantastic books for young scientists. But Sherlock Holmes said, there is nothing like firsthand evidence. 
he was able to, in his books, of course, he's a fictional character, but he was able to take the minutia of every day and figure out what happened from these um, observable things that most people missed. He took everything as observation. He took everything as evidence, and he was able to look at it that way. Evidence is what can be measured or observed. Again, this is one of those things you might want to write down, so I put the icon of the note cards up in the top right-hand corner. Evidence is that which can be measured or observed, while inferences are logical assumptions based on evidence. We can assume that someone who lives in the house ate the apple, or we can assume that, let's say, the Iceman was killed by a foe or an enemy. Uh, we can assume that Sherlock Holmes is always going to get his man. These are all assumptions based on evidence. Phew, that's not much, right? That's not much for this edition of digital replay. Evidence is impartial. It's just what can be measured or observed. It shouldn't have anybody's influences. Inferences are reasonable conclusions that we draw on the evidence. The strength of an explanation, the strength of an inference relies on the strength of the supporting evidence. Thanks for watching. This has been Digital Replay for Unit 1, the introduction, inference, and evidence. You can find this video and all my other videos on my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash the Mrs. R. We will see you next time.